lifestyle. Sports cards and we live now. Jeremy Lee in the building and every guest that you ever needed. Sports cards after hours keep the hobby heated. Updates, hobby talk like you never seen it. Sports cards live and I could ever beat it. Sports cards is a lifestyle. Sports cards and we live now. Welcome to another episode of Sports Cards Live with your host, Jeremy Lee. All right, everybody, what is up? Let's get this going. Welcome, everybody, to the PWCC Weekly Hockey Auction Ending Watch Party for March the 31st, 2024. It is Sunday, and my name is Jeremy Lee, and we have a fun show ahead, some great cards tonight. Let's bring out our co-host, Mr. Josh Madigan. Welcome back, sir. You looking forward to this one? Yeah, I am. Happy Sunday. Happy Easter, I guess, to those that celebrate. It's a good auction. Lots of cool cards tonight. So looking forward to that. Happy Easter, everyone. Good call right there. And uh, so I didn't tell you this uh, pre-show, Josh, but I have a pack of 1990 score hockey here that was actually sent to me by a viewer of Sports Cards Live. Frank Castle sent this to me a while ago. I've been sitting on it, but we're going to open it. Maybe, maybe we can hit a Martin Brodeur rookie card or an Eric Lindros rookie card or a Darian Hatcher or an Olaf Kolzig. I think Oli's, Oli the goalie's only rookie card comes out of this product. I don't know if it's the Canadian or the American version. I'm going to guess it's the American version. But I'm going to open mm-hmm. this at some point here. And All right. Begin the show. But uh, we, yeah, like we said, good auction tonight. Uh, and we're going to play Survivor. We're going to play Survivor again. So for those of you in the audience we're going to run through all the 68 cards that we are going to be covering this evening and you guys can pick a card for survivor we're going to have to go in order so uh we're, we're going to start with mere josh we're going to we're going to reserve those first two picks and then we're going to go to you guys so don't put your picks in yet we're going to run through them and uh before we do that let's just say hello chris perkins welcome to the show what's going on the professor is here happy easter to you professor warrior kid gary says Looking forward to it. Another home run show. Gary, welcome. And Warrior Kid, where were where no, no, what, what am I missing? There he is. Warrior Kid. Happy Easter to you as well. Jake Dahl, welcome to the show. Happy Easter. Josh, I'm gonna run through the cards with you okay. that we are looking at right now. We're gonna go kind of quick. So all of you out there, and Josh, you too, think about what you want for your survivor card. Craig's cards, what's going on, buddy? And then we're gonna open the pack of score hockey that I just showed. We're gonna open this one live for fun. And, uh, and then we're going to get into the show. So we're going to run through. Andrew, happy holidays to you as well. Justin, what is going on? This is uh, this is the PWCC Weekly Hockey Auction, Auction Ending Watch Party. Todd, what's happening? And guys, of course, I'm going to put in the affiliate link to the chat right now. There it is. If you are bidding on anything tonight, uh, please do click that link and uh, go through there. Greatly, greatly appreciate that. Let's PWCC know that we're doing something fun over here. All right, guys. Up for auction tonight, cards that we are watching, 68 of 360 total on PWCC. We've got some vintage. we got the Jeffrey on rookie. we got the second year Lindsay that Josh and I covered on the Gong Show on Wednesday. we got the Gordie Howe 53 Parkers. I love that card. we got the Tim Horton 53 Parkers. I love that card as well, but I got something to talk about with this particular copy. A beautiful Bobby Hall rookie. We've got a 1960 Jacques Plante. We've got a George Vezina all-time greats from 1960 tops and a, a beautiful, absolutely stunning second-year Stan Makita. We've got a nice 63 Parker Scordy Howe with the American flag in the background. Eddie Jackman rookie card from 65 tops, also Jerry Cheevers. And then we got the Gordie Howe base from that set. But we also have the Gordie Howe 600 goal commemorative card. I don't know that I've ever really noticed this in the PWCC auction, Josh, but I wanted to bring it up because instead of having the team in these pucks above, mm-hmm. like Phil Esposito rookie, it has 600 goals, the first NHL 600 goal score. Really cool commemorative card. And then this is just a fun card. I just wanted to show this to everybody because look at the photography they used in 1972. I just don't know that we've really seen photography like that in other years. We got a 78 Opeachy Mike Bossy rookie, PSA 9, five Wayne Gretzky rookies to choose from, three Mario Lemieux. We got the 88 Opeachy Gretzky. We've got the 99 Sign of the Times Gretzky auto out of 25 and a Duncan Keith future watch auto. He's a likely Hall of Famer, I have to think. Mm-hmm. We've got the Artifacts Crosby rookie. We've got the Power Play 
Crosby rookie. And we got some young guns. We got the Ovechkin. We got the Crosby. We got a Gretzky sign of the times from 06 and an original 2012 uh, PMG red of Alexander Ovechkin. We've got a nice, this is a cool card. This is the one of one Panini Prism Finite John Tavares. This is these are really important cards. It seems like in in football and basketball, I think they are important in hockey too. They are to me as Tavares. I mean, still a great player, really cool card right there. Crosby buyback. I love this image of him. Look at the intenseness. That's a 2013 buyback, and we got a Nate McKinnon BGS 95 Young Guns right there. There's a PSA 10. We got the Dry Saddle Young Gun, the McDavid Exquisite Auto Rookie at a 149. One of my favorite cards in the auction right here is the Showcase. Ultraviolet uh, medallion, Sidney Crosby, uh, sorry, Connor McDavid, numbered out of 25. I do love that card. We got the McDavid Opeachy Platinum rookie card. We've got the Marc Andre Fleury SPA limited auto patch, another card that Josh and I talked about. That was one of my picks on the Gong Show. If you haven't listened to that mm -hmm. episode, please take a moment and do so. We've got a McDavid Artifacts rookie year card. We've got a Ovechkin buybacks. This is, this is from Upper Deck Buybacks 05, but the original card. I believe is just from base upper deck. And uh, it looks like they bought back 12 leads, but a three color Jersey piece, really cool. And look how well he placed the auto. We'll come back to that. Vasilevsky buyback young guns auto. Nice priority signings. Gretzky auto right there. We've got an, a couple of McDavid young guns. We got the Barzell young guns, high gloss. We got the Gretzky ultimate collection legacy signatures, the Jack Hughes SP authentic future watch auto. Another Gretzky buyback. From 2017 OPG Platinum. Look at the auto on that. I think it's really nice. Two mm -hmm. PMGs. We got Makar. We got we have Jack Hughes and Makar right there. I love those cards. Another Gretzky buyback auto. We've got the Hughes Canvas Young Guns and the Quinn Hughes Clear Cut Young Gun right there. The Suzuki Employee PMG. We've got the Hughes Young Gun Exclusives out of 100. And we've got the Quinn. So Jack Hughes here. Quinn Hughes over here is Cup RPA sitting at 700 bucks right now in a PSA 8 holder. Three Kale McCarr Young Guns. Let's just see how they do. Hopefully they do the same thing, but it'll be interesting. Kaprizov, Future Watch Auto. Kaprizov Young Guns. And the Daniel Miromanov. And you might, why are Jeremy, who's Daniel Miromanov? Well, he was recently traded to my Calgary Flames and he's doing okay there. We're liking him. We are, oh, I didn't hit. Thank you, Professor. I did not hit the Instagram go live. I've now hit it. Thank you for the reminder, Professor. And we've got, this is a gorgeous card here. This Gretzky, the show auto, I think is absolutely mm -hmm. stunning. Yeah, Josh is nodding along. And we've got a 2021 Sidney Crosby base exclusives numbered out of 100. I'm going to scroll back up to the top. Pick your survivor card, guys. But wait till me and Josh mention ours. And then we'll take down yours. We'll open the pack of score. And then we'll get into it. So, Josh, let's see. I'm not sure yet what my survivor card is going to be. Do you have yours selected? I think so, but I have a total crisis of confidence with this game now. I think I'm terrible at it. I'm going to go great. with the, okay, the go. McDavid Artifacts dual patch. Oh, interesting pick. McDavid Artifacts. Okay, good pick, good pick. I think you've you've influenced me to go in a certain direction, and I'm going to get to that in okay. a moment so i'm going to pick so this is this is this is josh's pick right here this mcdavid i think i am going to go with the sydney crosby artifacts rookie mm -hmm. that's what i meant josh i'm gonna go with the crosby artifacts rookie all right now to the chat you guys can whenever you want give us your thoughts on what card you think will last the longest tonight in the auction among these 68 or so that we've selected to look at. If you need me to run through them again, I will. I'm just going to run to the top. All right, there's our first pick. Gary is taking the bossy PSA 9. Nice pick, Gary. Good pick. The bossy OPG PSA 9. Warrior Kid. Warrior is taking the... Opeachy Lemieux rookie. Which one warrior? Is there only one Opeachy? Opeachy Lemieux. Let's run to those for a second and see which one that is. So we've got Opeachy. We have three Opeachies here, Warrior Kid. Please pick one of them. We have a BGS 9, a BGS 9, or sorry. Yeah, a BGS 9, a BGS 9, 5, and a PSA 9. Which one specifically? Brett S. is taking the Tavares. I was tempted to take that one too, Brett. The Tavares. 
Prism 101. We've got Luigi. Luigi has taken the Opichi Gretzky PSA 8. All right, Luigi. I collectible 86. I took your pick. You can't be out 86. You're not out 86. We're not progressing with the show until you pick another pick. So you have to pick something. You have to pick something. Warrior Kid has taken the BGS 9.5. And BC Neal, welcome to the show, BC Neal, is taking the Quinn Hughes RPA. All right. All right. 86. Make a pick. Make a pick. Okay. We're not we're not progressing until you make your pick 86. You're in this. You're, you're one of the originals. All right. While 86 is making his pick, I'm going to we'll just scroll to the top here. And uh I'm gonna open up this pack of uh this pack of score. Here, let's do it like this. All right, Josh. All right, just for fun. It. This is junk wax, guys. But you know what? Someone sent it to me. We're gonna crack this open and we're hoping to hit the Lindros, the Brodeur. I'd even be happy with the Olaf Kolzig, Rick Zombo to start things off, followed by Bernie Nichols. Bernie Nichols, one of the greatest goal scorers of all time. That's Canadian, right? Because it's got the red. This is, this is Canadian. Yes, it's the red. Yeah. I didn't know it's the red. You're right. Thank you. We got a Paul Coffey for the Pittsburgh Penguins, Hall of Famer. Uh, Eric Weinrich, rookie. Not the rookie we were looking for. Mm -mm. I just I just flicked that card off. The... <laughs> We've got a Murray Barron. Murray Barron. Rick Corvo. Francois LaRue. Who are all these guys? I know. Doug Wilson. Tom Fergus of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Hey, Brett Hall. Look at that image. There you go. Brett Hall. Isn't that a beauty? That's a beauty card. Brett Hall. We've got a Joe Sorella, Quebec Nordiques. Mm -hmm. We've got a Yerky Lume. Yerky Lume of the Vancouver Canucks. We've got a Russ Cortnell. Montreal Canadiens, Ulf Samuelson, and Kelly Miller. Well, we, 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 uh, no, no Lindros, no Brodeur, no Ole Kolzig, no Mike Ricci. That's okay, though. That was fun. Thank you to Frank Castle for sending me the pack. Let's see if anyone else made any picks. Here, Todd McDonald with a nice pick. Todd McDonald is taking Gretzky's The Show card. Josh, I also thought about that one. I think that's such a cool card. Isn't okay, Frank 86. Castle the name of the Punisher? I don't know. I think it is. Is, that, is yeah. it? Yeah. Hilarious. Maybe. Hilarious. Hilarious. BC Neal, because you're bidding on it. Bidding on the Quinn Hughes. Very good. Andrew said 17 of those on PSA, I guess, take a safe bet and take down the McKinnis. The McKinnon. PSA 10. 86 is taking the McDavid Young Gun. All right, 86. The McDavid Young Gun. Very, thank you. Craig's Cards is going to take the Crosby, the Crosby buyback. So I don't know if there's only one of, how many Crosby buybacks, Josh? Do you have any recollection of how many Crosby buybacks there were in this? I only know the auction? horizontal auto that both of us are kind of eyeing. This one right here? Okay. Is that the only one? All right. Well, you're not sharing the screen. Oh, thank you for thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, the Crosby buyback, the horizontal. That's going to Craig. And uh, you meant Cro okay, so 86 meant Crosby, no problem. We'll change that to Crosby. And good evening, sports card 613. Yeah, Francis LaRue, Francois LaRue. Chris Perkins is taking the Francois LaRue. Frank Castle is indeed the Punisher. Justin Daniel, what's going on? And Mike Kemmel. Mike Kemmel. All right, guys. We got more participants than ever before. Mike Kemmel taking the McDavid Ultimate out of 175. So which one is that? Which is the McDavid? Josh, are you? Which McDavid out of 175 is that? The oh, this one here out of 149? That's not well, yeah, ultimate. That's exquisite. It's exquisite. I know. It can be hard to remember. Let's see if it's something down here further. McDavid. Well, it can't be too far down because it's a McDavid auto, so it's going to be 
Yeah. Uh, the RC, he says. The R. Okay, I think you're the exquisite. You mean the exqu? Okay, we're gonna even give. We're gonna give you the McDavid exquisite RC out of one forty nine. That's going to to uh, to you, Mike. Thank you, Justin Daniel. Don't know what you're talking about, Justin. Sorry, don't know what you're talking about there. Okay, Josh, let's jump in now and uh, and talk about some of these cards. And I think we'll start right here at the top, guys. We've got the 1951 Boom Boom Jeffrey on Hall of Famer PSA six. Looks like a nice looking card to me. We'll zoom in on it. Let me uh, let me we'll jump, zoom in on that. We got the PSA two Ted Lindsay, which is just a beautiful second year card. Looks like a really nice PSA two to me. And then we got the 53 Parker's Gordy Howe. There's the Boom Boom. Very nice copy. Looks looks like a six all day to me, but the color is very strong. Look at mm -hmm. how, like, look how dark the black, oftentimes we see fish eyes throughout the black background. Sometimes the red text down here will fade. This is a beautiful card. It's a six. It's a beautiful card. I like it for a six. The second year Ted Lindsay, we talked about this at length, Josh, on the Gong Show. You can listen to that, guys. But if you're looking to buy it tonight, this is one that you can certainly jump on. It's a very nice PSA 2. And then we've got the Gordy Howe PSA 4. I just love these 53 Parkhursts. Absolutely love them. And this one looks great for a four. And notice the, the discoloration in the border. Now, mm -hmm. you'd think that that's a negative. I love it. I want my 53 Parkies to show their age. Very nice card right here. Josh, I would like to give you a moment to speak about these. Yeah, the one that really stands out to me is the Ted Lindsay, where we covered that, like you said, on our show went into great detail and we talk a lot about vintage cards and the importance of not the grade but eye appeal and to me this the eye appeals off the charts uh good for a psa too now, i think you mentioned that when you did kind of your analysis of it that there might be some slight creasing on the back right isn't that what you said why you think it could have gotten the two grade because you look at the front and you're like how is this card a two it's pretty hard to conceive and we're usually used to Cards with that low of grade having some pretty significant and obvious condition issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's take a quick look at the back. I mean, yeah, like the back, I'm going to do it differently. We're going to do it like this for a moment. I mean, the back is just, you know, yeah. quick review looks good. There has to be a crease somewhere on this. Oh, there, yeah, there we go. I'm seeing yep. creasing right in here. And I, I mentioned that on, on the show. I'm also yep. seeing something right through here now. It's tough to spot these things. You know, you really have to let your eyes take a minute to, to focus and just acclimatize, acclimate to these images. Uh, maybe something down here too. And when you look back at the front of it, uh, I don't notice those on the front. I'm only noticing it on the back, but I think mm -hmm. that must be it is some some of that creasing going on. So yeah, pretty uh, pretty cool cars. What do you, how do you like this one, Josh, the Gordy? It's cool. Uh I don't know. I mean, it, it, I still probably prefer the 1951 and the 52, of course, the 51, the rookie. But uh, I'm always constantly amazed, like how different the, you know, the progression was from 51 to 52 to 53. Right. It's mm -hmm. like especially 51 to 52, as we've mentioned before, it's like almost like a decade went by. Um, and this row contains those those cards 1951 parkers 1952 parkers and 1953 parkers you can see the progression right there that josh was just talking about and just hey justin dan yeah sorry i didn't know what you were talking about uh, i say what's up to everybody but i you're probably in the wrong place so thank you to 86 for for clarifying that i appreciate that 86 all right guys next row Another 53, my other favorite. I like three cards from 53. I like I like the Horton, the Richard, and the Gordy Howe. I'm like, who wouldn't? We have a PSA 8, Tim Horton, right here. We have a PSA 2.5, uh, Bobby Hull, rookie, no eye appeal, and the Jacques Plant. So let's just close a couple of these windows here. And uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to start this over again, guys. Sorry about that. We're going to open up this one. And we're going to open this one. We'll leave the Plant for now. But this card grades out an eight now i've seen my share of this card and mm -hmm. this particular copy 
it's it seems to be extremely faded. Do you see that? Do you see what I'm talking about there, Josh? Now it might yeah. just be the imaging. I doubt it. It looks to be extremely light in color. And you know, for that reason, this is a I don't know how it got. I guess it's an eight because of the corners and the edges and the centering is all very nice. But you know, centering is so important in sports cards. The hobby has, has spoken. Centering is so important. You know, Josh knows, and I talk about registration all the time. I love registration. But as important, really, is the color and the, the, the boldness of the image. And this one is completely lacking in that boldness, in my opinion, and compared to other copies I've seen. So while this is a great card for somebody who, who is really interested in competing on the PSA set registry for various things, it's a nice grade of an eight. Uh, you know, for me, I would prefer a, a more vibrant six, let's say, that might be have a slight, slight corner ding or something like that. But, you know, if you're looking for a PSA to this card, here's a chance. And because the the weak color, it should sell for, a you know, a low eight in this case. 86 says this looks bleached with a question mark. I don't know. Uh, it might it might have been bleached. I really don't know. I've never bleached a card. I've never knowingly seen a bleached card. I can only speculate. So I'm not going to opine on that 86, but possibly, possibly. That I didn't even that didn't even enter my, my mind actually. I thought maybe this thing was just very very light. Maybe it was sitting out in in a dealer showcase for years and years. So but that that could that could pretend yeah decoy that sun fading is what I was thinking that's what I was thinking as well but um, I guess uh, I guess well, we we really don't know <laughs> we just don't know at this point point. and then we got the Bobby Hall PSA two point five you know these are always off center and this one is very badly off center especially look how narrow that bottom border is and the right border and then the top and the left are pretty wide corners though. Nice uniform rounding. I really like that about it. The, the corners are awesome for what they are. They're obviously rounded, but I like that. I really like that. You got some surface wear, uh, but you know, overall, the card doesn't present too poorly. And the and the 1960 Jacques Plant PSA it looks very nice. Josh, I'd like your comments specifically on these two to, to get started. Well, what I've been thinking about with the Tim Horton and listening to your explanation of it is. So I'm here in the U.S. We don't see these cards in person ever. And so if I want a card like this, it, I might not have the context to understand. Like I can tell if corners are sharp and edges look good and a card is centered. And so I think it really strikes to the importance of doing your research before you buy a card like this, looking at multiple photos. You have to make some sort of determination because the you know a, a photo can have different depending on the lighting that it was taken in. And I think another thing that complicates cards like these, and even if you compare this to the Gordie Howe, is on a lot of these sets, it seems like they had different artists too. And, and so there's not like a, a great degree of consistency where you can go from like one player to another. So I think you'd have to find the Tim Horton specific card and make your own determination on what you, if the surface, um, coloring and or, or potential fading is something that would shy you away from appreciating the card great advice really important advice there especially for the for, for the beginner the new to hockey the new to vintage make sure and, and this josh that's so important i'm so glad you said that I, I wish i said it you whenever you're buying any vintage card compare that you have maybe are not that familiar with don't just buy it compare it to other copies so important josh any thoughts on the on the bobby hall from yourself appreciate the card there's the the centering is just too much for me uh on this one but 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 for a 2.5 and a very iconic card a card that gets very expensive as you get higher grades um i i do uh the other thing too is like gosh those corners are so rounded and so rounded evenly I, i'm kind of i'm trying to figure out how that happens naturally <laughs> I love it. I, I I think I think it's it's just from kids playing with them, you know. Uh, yeah, probably. In the shoebox and just even where probably. I love the corners on that one. I'm you know, <laughs> I it's so crazy, but I I just yeah I have a thing for those rounded corners. All right, let's keep on going, guys. We've got we got three nice cards here. So I wanted to here's another low grade card that I wanted to to show everybody. 
And then the next two, I just wanted to just talk about briefly. So this is a 1960 tops George Vezina. This is from the all times great. This is a subset within the 1960 tops. And it's really the first time that I can think of where we saw like an homage to some of these original players in, in a set of, of sports cards. And this is 1960 all time greats. Uh, they're also the there's also the old time grades from I think the 1955 set. So I, I'm gonna retract that. I'm gonna retract that. It's the second time we've seen it. Mm -hmm. But I think we have different players. This is a really cool old school card of George Vezina. You could try to get his 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 rookie card in 1911 C55. I believe there's one coming up in next week's auction, a nice PSA four. Uh, we'll we'll definitely highlight that next week, uh, or you know, or you can go for his 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 uh, 1912 C57, which is extremely elusive, or one of his 20 his Pattersons from 23 or 24, or you. Can, but those are also very expensive. This is a great opportunity to get a really cool George. It's a vintage card, but it's not a playing days card. I think it's pretty cool. I like the looks of it. And then we got one of my favorite cards in the auction, the second year Stan Makita. If you are if you're astute, you'll notice that this is the exact same picture of Stan that you see on his 1960 rookie card but this is just a I just love the condition I love the centering on this card the edges the corners it's a PSA 9 extremely strong grade just a beautiful beautiful card and then finally the 63 64 Parker's Gordy Howe the, this is an interesting set you've kind of got several players have two cards within it you got flags behind several of the players and you'd think to yourself, well, he's Canadian. Why is he in front of the American flag? Well, because he played for Detroit, which is obviously an American city. So they put the Americans in front of the American flag. And then they they put the, the Canadians in front of the old Canadian flag. A lot of people think it's the British flag. It isn't. It's the old mm. Canadian flag. So uh, a pretty neat set. We haven't really seen that again until I think in the game did paid homage to this set uh, several years ago. So some fun some fun cards in this row Josh why don't you say a few words about those and then we'll go to some comments and get caught up there yeah the Vesna is interesting would you say is he the biggest pre-war chase he you know he really is outside of a gimmicky card the 1923 Patterson Burt Corbeau who was really a common player but he was the player that the Patterson company used as the short print to get kids to buy. So they mm. couldn't send in for the premium, the prize as often. So, but to me, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, I have no interest. A lot of people have interest in the Burt Corbeau. It's a flex card, but it's yeah. like, it's not like Honus Wagner being the, you know, the shorter printed, it seems like card in T206 is, but he was a super, he was a superstar. He's a hall of famer. Burt Cor Corbeau is a nobody except for the card. So, um, that would be a, a, but as far as really true, like great pioneer uh, Hall of Fame players, the Vezina is the biggest one. I then, you know, to me as important, but not to others, is the 1923 Patterson Howie Morenz. Yeah, I was going to ask about Howie Morenz if he was, if that was maybe the 1A, 1B. I really appreciate too the Stan Makita. It, it is a very interesting card. This is a very nice copy. It is interesting, like you said, because it's the same image. I also, like if you try to take it seriously, the background he's in, um, he's probably slicing somebody's ankle off uh, with his left skate and getting very close to a bad situation with the right skate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he might knock the puck off the guy's head as well. That guy's taking a beating, <laughs> he's taking a beating from Stan Makita in this one. And uh, how do you like, how do you like seeing the U S flag on, on these old hockey cards? It's weird. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think it, it it's kind of, I look at that and I wonder like what Gordy thought of that when he said yeah. that. Same here. I think I wonder the same thing. I like the image of Gordy. I think it's a, it's an amazing picture it's of Gordy. Cool Howard man, he looks, he looks great in this image. Uh, I've, you know, I think they're, they're kind of cool, but I've never just loved them aesthetically. You know, I just, mm -hmm. I don't love the way the flag is, is laid out behind them, but I think they're still, they're still pretty, pretty cool cards. Uh, Robert Scott said the borders are way too white on the, on the Horton right over here. Yeah, I, I agree. I think they are too white. BC Neal thought it could be from sitting on a, on a windowsill. I think that could definitely be the case. 86 says this, this Stan Makita is my favorite of the auction this week. It had me checking eBay for additional cards in the set. 
Unfortunately, the nicest ones were were Hab scars. Chris Perkins loves the 1960 set, and Craig likes the 63. How? Yeah, very good stuff, guys. All right, next row, three cards from 1965 tops. The Eddie Jackman rookie card, goaltender for the Rangers, Hall of Famer. The Jerry Cheevers rookie card. PSA 8. The Jackman is a PSA 7. Also, of course, a Hall of Famer in Jerry Cheevers. And the Gordie Howe base card. This is a nice PSA. It looks to be very nicely centered. Not perfect, but pretty nice overall. And as, as I say all the time, if you're working on the Gordie Howe, the Gordie Howe base, base card run, well, this card is on that checklist. And uh, 65 tops is just such a cool set overall. Josh, what do, you, what do you think of the 65 set? How do you like the aesthetic and the design with these pucks going across the top where the team name is? I like the I like that a lot, and it's very emblematic of the era for me. The the struggle with some of the cards in this set that I have, and it's just a personal preference thing, is I've mentioned before I'm not a big portrait guy. So like the like the Ed Giacman is not the exact type of card that appeals to me. I like more the action shot or the on the ice versus the the portrait, but that that's just a personal preference thing. So I would much prefer like the Jerry Cheevers of the three. Yeah. You can see the pads. You know he's a goalie. Eddie Jackman, without looking at the word goalie down here, you might yeah. not even know that he, unless you know. Unless you know. Two more 65 tops. Again, the 600 goal Gordie Howe card. I mean, considering he ended up with, what, 891, something like that. Uh, he was on his way here at 600. We got the Phil Esposito rookie card. One of the, you know, the key card from the 65 mm -hmm. tops is this one right here. The Esposito, a PSA 8. Centering isn't perfect, but, you know, well within PSA's standards for centering for an 8. Probably even within their 9 standards. And then this card here, Josh, I just wanted to show it again because I love the picture. You got these two guys with their hair looking perfect. I mean... <laughs> Bobby Hall's hair, you can see the part right there. He still has hair back then. Lucky guy. Lucky guy with hair. Like all you guys with hair, you lucky guys. And then he's, you know, you got kind of a comb over happening up here. And I'm not sure who this is, but look at that part. Like, did these guys do their hair before they hit the ice back then? I just think this is a neat card. It's not the clearest image, but, you know, this is the 70s. This is early 1970s. So I really like it. What do you think of that image, Josh? It is awesome. It is like a window in time. And it, it's really not until that the really you get into this window of, of time are, are the photos more photorealistic. Like a lot of the photos of the 60s cards, you have a hard time sometimes telling if they're paintings or photos or they were color touched up or, or, or something like that, where that looks like a real action shot. And you're right. It is kind of funny. It's like where they slicking their hair in between periods, probably having cigarettes and taking pulls off the whiskey bottle, right? That was the, heck, even Mario Lemieux smoked in between periods at the beginning of his career. So it was just Crazy. a totally different time and a different, you know, athlete. Yeah, yeah, very cool. But the professor has a good question. Why do you think there's a price difference between the two 1965 Gordie Howe Tops cards? So we've got his simple base card right here, PSA 8 coming in at 430 right now. And then we've got his 600 goal commemorative card, number 122. So they're close to each other in the set. Uh, and it's at 625. And it's, 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 the centering is worse. So to answer the question, why do I think? I think it's, it's, uh, it's got to be one of two things. Population, some population. Uh, and then the other thing is how many people need it's got to, it comes back to population so i'm mm -hmm. going to stick with that it's got to be population uh professor is my opinion joe perot welcome to the show thank you for popping in and 86 is i love the 72 73 top set which is this set here but the tops version and it's funny to hear because to me this is like the uh and just my opinion it's like the ugliest set of the 70s in my opinion but that gives it character and that right there makes it somewhat enticing so uh, i'm glad that, that 86 loves the set josh let's go to the next row here the mike bossy psa 90 peachy rookie let's take a look at this one because these cards are notoriously off center this copy it is uh, it, it is centered much better i'm sensing very slight tilt I just mm -hmm. see that it's a bit narrower here than down over here. 
and the opposite over here. I think I'm I'm not seeing as much on the right side. So that just might be an optical illusion, but I do love this card. I own a copy of this in a nine in my collection. And uh, Mike Bossy is an all-time great. So I love the Bossy card. We have two Opichi Gretzky's in the top row here and three down here. These are the two Beckett copies. We're going to open these up, Josh, and take a quick peek. We got a, a, a BGS 3.5. Let's look at this one first. And you know, I don't want to do a full analysis, but what I'm noticing, first of all, you got corner issues here. You got some dings in the in the border over here, more so than just rough cut, I think. The the registration, you can tell it's slightly off. The yellow plate is positioned to the right. What I'm not crazy about is this little bump here mm -hmm. on the edge. That throws me off. You have another mm -hmm. one down over here. Coming down the, the borders, you've got some issues down over here, issues over here on the corners. The registration, though, is overall pretty good. Oil drop is well-placed, not perfectly. Not seeing any crazy fish eyes. Maybe a scratch on the surface right over here. But I, I'm not going to disagree with the, with the grade on this. And I also do not believe that this is a sheet-cut card, which you kind of want to know about when you're buying a, a BVG-graded vintage card here's another one another bvg graded gretzky opichi that i don't believe is sheet cut and uh this is the 6.5 so the corners are much nicer you can tell at the top the left and right edges are much nicer than that three and a half the bottom left corner is good the bottom right corner has some fray happening the the registration guys is basically the exact same as the three and a half from what i can see nice clear image of him i really like this copy look at the centering on it this is to me. Oh, and I, I was just gonna. I was just asking myself, does it have eye appeal from uh, from PWCC? And it does, and it should. They they both have the E's for the top fifteen percent. Um, the three and a half, I think, is getting it because of the centering, and I can't disagree with that for three and a half. I think the eye appeal assessment is fair, even though I don't love these little bumps coming off of the the right border. But overall. From a centering perspective, this is a very nice copy. But this six and a half, this is an absolute stunner of a copy, in my opinion. And again, look at that oil drop. Is like the the magenta plate at least is perfectly placed. The yellow plate is a little bit off. You're seeing a bit of a bit of fuzziness in the bottom of the legs here, which is is that same effect. You're seeing it come in over here as well. But what a great this this comes with my complete seal of approval. I love this bvg 6.5 gretzky rookie what's it sitting at right now 15 and a quarter josh i was just talking about yeah well, let, let's get your thoughts layered on to mine then we'll go to some comments on these because we're getting some yeah the the great the 6.5 gretzky is very very nice my biggest problem is not with the card it's that it's the wampus in the holder that you see it's kind of like to the shifted to the to the side the holder's too big for the card which yeah. is unfortunate. wouldn't stop me from buying it. And then I'm sitting there thinking while you're going through it and agreeing with what you're saying. And I was like, man, this feels like a deal. It's a beauty. And so I looked and up, I'm, usually I'm, about 2,500 is where you would expect this card to sell. And so heck for, what is that? 1800 bucks. I, I think that would, I'd be very interested in that card. Yeah. This, this is again, like, listen, I, I don't feel like I say this very often, but this is a card that, if you're if you've been waiting, I I haven't seen this really until right now. If you've been waiting for a Gretzky rookie, uh, and, and this is in your budget, this is a it's a gorgeous card. I I would encourage anybody to to buy this card tonight. Uh, and you know me and just to show that I don't always say that. Just on the other hand, I would discourage anyone from buying this card tonight. So, <laughs> well, I would a, say in general a, we've been a balance more critical. We've been more critical than not on Gretzky rookies. I mean we yeah. We typically find uh, because the grading companies don't tend to look at certain elements of the cards that you very astutely point out. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Let's go to the next three Gretzky's and then we will uh, go to the comments that are coming in. So we've got the PSA eight rookie right there. Opichi. We got the authentic copy here. We don't know why it's uh, only authentic. And then we have an SGC eight. So I'm actually going to put the two eights beside each other up here. Let's look at the Opichi eight. Okay. So edges, corners, very nice, very nice. I want to zoom out for centering. Wow. 
there's a little bit of there there's some clockwise tilt there yeah there's definitely clockwise tilt on this but it's it's not too bad but it, i'm noticing it for sure the color is amazing this is a very vibrantly colored card uh i'm noticing that for whatever reason i'm just noticing it the edges are really nice and clean the bottom corners are really nice. The bottom right corner does show a hint of white, but that's okay to me. Oil drop is very well placed, not perfect. You're seeing slight fuzz, slight blur on the bottom of his two legs. The This yellowy orange kind of shadow coming off it, it's not too bad, but it is there. You can see it coming down this black line as well. The word Oilers, you know, it, it might be sitting a little on a little bit of a lower plane than the word Edmonton. I don't think we got eye appeal on this, do we? Oh, we do. We've got the the E eye appeal. Yeah, I mean, outside outside of the tilt, I would completely agree with that. This is a very, very nice copy. And then we have the SGC8. And right away, you can see that it's just not centered as well. Narrower mm. border here on the right. Look at the oil drop. The oil drop is trying to peek out and saying, look, here I am. I'm over here. You know, it's 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 jumping out of the pocket. So that that's a bit of a um, register. That's a, not a bit. That is a serious registration issue, right there. You can see it up here. Look how nice the word Edmonton is. How dark and black it is. But the word Oilers is sitting up higher, and that's because of the oil. The oil drop is also sitting higher. Same printing plate right there. And then looking here in the, in the white border, you're seeing the red, the magenta come up into into the white space where it just shouldn't be. Otherwise, we're not seeing any white gaps between the blues and the blacks here the he's pretty well focused in the legs the face is a little bit blurry so this sgc8 in my opinion is inferior to this one it's they've given it the above average eye appeal uh i don't know about that i, I just don't know i mean it uh this right here really throws me off a bit but but I, I want to say I agree with it, but I just don't know that I do. I don't. I think that was a bit generous. I'd call this about average for an eight to me, an SGC eight. But again, I haven't seen a, a hundred of them, so uh, it's it's a hundred SGC eights. I've, I've definitely seen a hundred PSA eights, and I definitely agree with this one here. Outside of the tilt, let's have a look at the authentic copy though, and just see what's going. Yeah, this thing's definitely been trimmed. Someone took a someone took some scissors to it. You can you can clearly mm -hmm. see it. This card's. This card's a bit of a mess. Um, the corners, the look at the oil drop. It's kissing the pocket here. We have some serious registration issues coming. Like, look at this thing with the blue coming in here to the white. Look at this white gap, Josh, right mm -hmm. in here. You see it coming all the way down here as we scroll up. Look at the blue coming in. Look, you, you got some of the, the green from the boards coming into the white here. White all the way up. 3D on Oilers. The yellow plate is... is shifted about a millimeter to the right and just the hack job on 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 the trim that that happened here uh, I, I think it's probably an innocent trim josh but i think it was you know trim like I'm, i mean like a kid might have done it or hey i could be wrong but anyway it is appropriately slapped as authentic and uh for someone who just wants to get into a gretzky you're at 490 bucks right now pre uh buyer's premium josh why don't you give us your comments on these and then we'll do comments from the chat yeah, I got a request for you, Jeremy. I would love to see the BBG 6.5 and the PSA 8 kind of do a side by side comparison. Cause I, I just, I just wonder, you know, you have worked in finance, right? So you're familiar with the concept of utility, mm -hmm. right? And you think of the $7,000 price difference between these two cards. And yeah, I'm so not going to argue that, that that one is, isn't. It shouldn't be an eight and one shouldn't be a 6.5. But I, I, I just think, man, the 6.5 at less than $2,000 comparatively is such a nice deal, a good deal. Yeah. So, so as you were saying, we're, we're 92.50. Uh, so we're 11 grand here out the door on this, on this Gretzky. And on the 6.5, we're at uh, just over 1,900. Now, jo you make a great point, Josh, speaking to utility. My biggest issue with this 6.5 is the is the rough cut on the left and not really as bad mm -hmm. on the right. Just that lack of, of rough cut uniformity. I don't mind it. You know, this it gets a little bit worse as you come down here. But that said, 
I love this copy. This for an eight, I don't love it. I just don't love it. Well, I, yeah, that, so that's I'm a good way to put I, it. Like, what would you be happier spending two thousand dollars for the six point five, or ten thousand dollars for that for that eight? Oh, I I think I like the six point five better. As mm -hmm. just, I think I like it better than the than the PSA eight. Uh, just as a card, I love the I love the the centering. I love the thickness of the blue borders on either side here. I love the placement of the oil drop here. I, I do like the edges. I like the corners. I like the card. This this card, I just don't like this as much. So I I it's not even close, Josh. I, I like mm -hmm. the 6.5. I might even buy it for the same price. You know, if 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 grading if grading didn't determine value, like if you if you had these two cards raw beside each other. I probably pick this one. I'll put it to you that way. I probably pick this one. I like it better. So there, there you go. There you go. Um, okay, we're gonna go to comments. You guys have some things to say. Louie, welcome to the show. Better late than never. Richie Rocket likes the Mike Bossy. What's going on, Richie Rocket? Andrew, good to see you. There's a true Ricky Auto threads. Andrew, I like the yeah, likes the six and a half uh, Gretzky, the BVG. Robert Scott says the Gordy Howe base pop 67, the 600 goal pop 61. That tells the thank for thanks for that, uh, that data, Robert. Again, we're talking about the difference in the price. We're at 675 on the 600 goal scorers card, and we're at 430. Meanwhile, this is a nicer card condition wise uh, than this one. And uh, the professor had asked, why, why the difference in price? I think we could see those two catch up to each other because the pop isn't that different. Uh, TDOT says that BVG was the label used for pre-1990. It's actually pre-1980, TDOT, not, pre, not pre-1990. I think you probably just have a typo there. I think it's actually pre-1981. I believe 1980 is still BVG. Thank you for that additional clarification. Uh, Warrior, do either of you have? Yeah, I've got several of the Gretzky rookie cards. Josh, do you have a Gretzky rookie yet? Not yet. Someday you're going to shop with me. There you go. BC Neal says, okay, I'm going 1800 on the six and a half. That's this one right here. Well, you've already been outbid because this is over that now. Oh, well, unless you're talking pre buyers premium, Neal, good luck. Uh, I'd be very happy for whoever wins that card. Andrew says the BVG six and a half over the eight all day. Terrible to say it's wild when you know your car. I'm with you, Andrew. I am so with you. 86 says that authentic Gretzky might be the worst one he's ever seen on this show. Yeah, it might be. It probably is. Jake Dahl loves learning new things about the Gretzky. Thanks, Jake. Always appreciate you being here. Always appreciate that too. Andrew says, I like the full rough, but it's still amazing. At, at 6.5. Yeah, it is definitely amazing. Louis, the rough cut just makes it look right. 6.5 all day. And Warrior Kid, I agree on the 6. Point. Yeah, we all like the 6.5 BVG uh, Gretzky. That's this one right here. Better than we like the PSA 8. Yes, I, I certainly do. This is a great card. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I should make a play out of it. I, I like it so much. BC Neal says after 19... Yes, 1920 after premium. Wish me luck. Okay, good luck. Oh, after premium. Thank you, BC yep. Neil. Good luck. Good luck. To, oh, he wants us to check the back of the card. That's a good idea. Let's check the back of the card for a second. Here we go. We are now checking the back of the card. We're going to open this up as an image so we can zoom in and out. And yeah, this thing's beautiful. Like, yeah, yeah. Not even seeing any severe fish eyes. You often see them in these brown kind of borders. I spotted one tiny one, you know, right here, right here. But mm -hmm. who cares? That, that's enough. That's a nothing to me. Um, yeah, great copy, you guys. Great copy, BC Neil. Good luck. Hope you win it. And if you are bidding, I hope you use the uh, or ask you to use the promo code here. I'm going to put it back into the uh, into the chat for everybody. The affiliate code. If you're bidding on any cards in the auction tonight, please click through this code this affiliate code that I just put into the chat. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, Josh, on to the Mario Lemieux. We have a, we have three of them. We have the, we have, we have the, we have the, the BGS nine, the 9.5, and we have the Opichi PSA nine. Josh, we're going to open up all three of these beside each other. And we're going to take a look and see if we can discern any major differences. So there's the nine, there's the Opichi 
BGS nine looks nice. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously it's on an angle in the holder. Don't let that throw you off. I don't think that it's miscut. Actually, the the centering looks really good. They've graded the centering a nine, and it looks every good as bit of an as a nine to me. I don't, you know, yeah, I guess it's maybe it's a little bit low, and that's why it's yeah. not a nine point five. But right to left it looks kind of perfect to me. All right, let's look at the BGS nine five. This one has centering as a 9.5. This is another beautiful copy. How's the centering on this one, though, Josh? Like, top to bottom looks good. The left side, is it a bit wider than the right? And when I compare it to this one, it seems to be the same centering to me on the two. But this one has the the benefit of having that gold 9.5 label up there. And then the PSA 9. I mean, counterclockwise tilt jumps right out at me. Look at this, Mm -hmm. how this left border gets wider and wider as you come down. And this one gets wider and wider as you go up. Uh, No eye appeal. Tell me no eye appeal. Yeah, no eye appeal. That's good to see. Um, So listen, I, I don't, here's the same question that Josh asked before. I don't think that there's, that this card here is so much better than this one that it's worth, you know, three grand more. And that's where we're at with buyer's premium. I just don't think that I would be as happy with this one as with this one. This one's brighter. Notice the color. Let's just do this, guys. Look at the color. This one seems to be a little bit discolored, a little bit of um, like off-white. And this one is brighter. So for that reason, I do like the 9.5 better. I just noticed that as I was zoomed out. Yeah, this one is... This one is just the tone of white. Josh, are you seeing how the tone of white here mm-hmm. is a bit darker than this one? I do mm-hmm. like the 9.5 better now. I got to retract what I said earlier. And this has this has good color too, but it's definitely got tilt. And to me, this is overgraded. I just I just can't see how this could be in a nine with that with that centering issue. Uh, tilt is an all is a is a centering issue, and it's a whole different kind of centering issue. And to me, it's worse than a normally off-centered card. It can make you dizzy. Okay, enough for me. I want to hear your thoughts on these three cards, please, Josh. Yeah, I was just doing some comp research, and I until tonight, and actually, kind of as I'm listening to you talk about these cards, I think the thing that struck me about this particular card is, and I, I do some want someday to have a Lemieux rookie. I think I'm going to look for a really nice and be picky and not just by the grade, but look for a really nice BGS nine or 9.5. You look at the 9.5, the gem mint grade, they typically sell in the 4,500 to 5,000 range. And like with any BGS card, you're going to have whether it's true gem or min gem or gem true gem plus or whatever, there's going to be a range there. A PSA 10 sells for 30 grand. So I'm I've got to bet there's some really nice BGS 9.5 copies that are on par with a PSA 10 that you can get at a heck of a discount and the only thing di- different would be the slap. Yeah. Yeah, I I I think I think that's a good strategy and I think you'll do well for yourself and you'll save some money and you'll still get a beautiful card. No, you just have to make sure it's not she cut, I suppose, cuz oh. that's the fear with the BGS, but that goes without saying. Yeah, that that's assumed in my <laughs> to me. That's assumed. Yes, of course. You don't. You definitely don't want to go with a a sheet cut copy. I, I at least I don't. I see a bid just came in on that, and uh, I I definitely you know this is a this is a beautiful copy. Um, this is this is no doubt a PSA nine worthy copy. It, it's more worthy of a PSA nine. Uh, than this one is like I'd say way more worthy of it than this one is. So the, the I'm no so this one color wise his face he's he looks a little brighter. Look at the look at his face guys in this image. I'll zoom in a little bit here. Look at his face. There's a really there. great comment too, Jeremy, about registration on this card. Yeah, I I feel like registration on this card. It's all it's it's not as easy for me to de- to determine. But but just simple focus. This card is so focused. This one, it's it's still in focus. It's just darker. It's just darker. Yet the the borders are so bright. And this one, the borders aren't as bright. But it it's he's so much easy. It's so much easier to see. Now that could be. You no, know that could be is that the plastics are different on PSA and Beckett. And I notice that 
All my cards that I have in Beckett holders mm -hmm. do not look as good as those that I have in PSA holders. Beckett's plastic is very, it just, it, it isn't as good in, you know, mm -hmm. in my opinion. So um, consider, consider that. But I think I think they're I think this is a, this is a beautiful copy still. So, okay, couple comments, guys. Thank you, BC Neil. Really, really appreciate that. Uh, Eighty six says I love Mario. Want his rookie, but I've changed and don't like it so much. I want his box bottom. Always evolving. The box bottom is amazing. It's an amazing, mm -hmm. amazing card. Andrew says I'm picky, but it's not a true gem nine five either. Yes, that's true. Penguins Chronicle, similar to Gretzky in the oil drop, the yellow of the triangle on the skating penguin logo is key to picking up registration on the Lemieux. Registration on the BGS 9.5 is worse than the BGS 9. So let's take a look at what Penguins Chronicles is talking about. So the, he's talking about the yellow of the triangle and where it sits, I guess, relative to the black triangle. And so, I, oh, I think I see. Maybe you're seeing something happening right over With here. The beak. What's oh the beak? The is did, did he mention the beak? I don't know. I I'm trying yeah, to figure the, it out too. I can't zoom any more than that. Uh maybe there's some yellow. I'm not really seeing that, but it also might be because the regist uh, a uh, a less than perfect registration on this might actually be such that the yellow it might be shifted, but it's still under the black, so we can't see it. You know, that could be what's mm -hmm. happening. But that's why you might see it better in the beak. I'm not noticing that from what Penguins Chronicles is saying. The beak and the gloves, he says, I can't, I'm having trouble seeing it. I'm just having trouble seeing it right now, Penguins Chronicles. But thank you for pointing that out. I think you've said it before too. So um, yeah, I, I, I can't make any more comments on that. He says, the registration of the nine is the best of the three, but it has the tilt. Yeah, we definitely noticed uh, the tilt right there uh com complaino says um can you comment on the gretzky authentic seems like it has great eye appeal but just worried about it being only a uh we we just did we spent some time on that complaino and i think the general thought was that it's kind of one of the worst gretzky's we've ever seen on this show uh but if, if that's what you're looking for is a low-grade gretzky well here you go you're gonna pick this up for under 600 bucks right now so uh good luck really if it's if it's a card you're after I don't want to discourage you from going for it because that might be what's in your wheelhouse. And, um, and you know, overall it, it, it does have issues though. It does have issues. So, but thanks for joining the show. Complaino. All right, Josh, let's go on. Let's move on. So we're going to go past the Lemuse, the Gretzky. And by the way, guys, three minutes left in this level. If anything here is in red, it needs a bid to go to the next bidding level. Otherwise these, are going to end in green. And um, Josh, can you just, I, I'm actually looking at bidding on a card myself and I just need to do something quick. So All right. Check the population of something. Uh, it's not even a hockey card, so nothing to worry about here, guys. But I'm just curious about this card that I'm looking at and I've got my information. So that's great. Okay. Sorry, Josh. No worries. Well, now you got to share at the end of the auction. At the end of the, well, I may or may not. We'll see. We'll okay. see. But thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> we'll see. All right. 1988 Opeachy Gretzky PSA 9. I just love this card. Always fun to show and talk about. This one looks really nicely centered. Again, not perfect, but really nicely centered. We got a 1999 SP Authentic Crosby, uh, Wayne Gretzky, Sign of the Times Gold out of 25. We don't see Sign of the Times Golds anymore. That might have been a one and done thing. I'm not exactly sure, but we don't see those very often. And then Duncan Keith, he's I think he's going to be a Hall of Famer. He certainly is deserving, I believe. Uh, this is his future watch auto. The auto itself definitely faded. Not not the sweetest copy. This has definitely seen too much sunlight. Uh, th this one needs some aloe to to fix that. I just kid. Allo won't do the trick, but Josh, what do you think of these three cards? Uh, can you look at the Gretzky real quick? I'm just curious why the auto got a nine. Because yeah, looks I didn't even notice that myself. Thanks for pointing from, uh, that out. From face value. Oh, I see. It's a little. Well, I, I mean, I've seen slab worse too. Yeah, seen worse autos with better grades. So I don't. I, I you know the auto grade is something to really not get too hung up on. I, I I actually, actually, I think I really like this card and. Uh, I'm a big fan of 90s Gretzky autos when he's still playing. Uh, I, I know it's not as big of a 
significance to you, but but I do like those. And so um, this is a card I'd be interested in. All right. Well, there you go. And it is, it's a cool looking card. It's early Gretzky Auto, Sign mm-hmm. of the Times. Okay. Let's keep on going. Oh, the artifact. So that was me. I'm out of the, I am now out of Survivor. So I'm going to cross because I have the Crosby artifacts. Let's scroll through, guys. Let's scroll through and see what's going on here. The Ovechkin Young Guns is at 2,900. Five minutes left in this window now. The Crosby is at 24. PSA 10. The Ovechkin's also a PSA 10. The Sign of the Times Gretzky from 2006. Beautiful card. 480. 700 on the PMG Red. Uh, Ovechkin. I love this card here, guys. I was I was thinking about making a play at this one, but mm-hmm. at the moment, I'm the high bidder on something else. And uh, we'll see if I'm the proud owner of it in the next um, in the next four minutes. I'm just kind of looking down on my phone. I'm logged in on my bidding account there. Josh, if there's anything you'd like to say about any of these, please. Yeah, I actually want to say something about your survivor pick. I have a theory why I want to tell you why I wouldn't have picked that card. And it's not because I don't like it. I think Upper Deck has made a big mistake basically publish or printing the same card as is in every single year. So if you got the 2022 set, you could find, I got a Nathan McKinnon that looks, I could show you looks exactly like that. And what I think over time it does is it just diminishes the specialness of a card just like this. It just feels like the random $10 card that's now in the, in the artifact set. And, And this is like one of the key things I wish upper deck would stop doing are these, uh, endless tributes yeah I, I i know i know please quit messing with the market values of our original designed cards right mm-hmm. now that said i love this card I oh love it's a it. great card yeah and and yeah i i own a copy of it i it's actually the only crosby i think it's the only crosby rookie card i own right now uh is this one so after all the internet wars you've had that's the only crosby rookie you own Oh, you want to see my whole Crosby collection, or you no. just want to know my rookie? <laughs> I was just joking yeah. with you. I was just joking yeah. with you. I've I've owned five of the Cup RPA Crosbys over over the the existence of that card. I currently own zero, but I have owned okay. five of them uh, in my career. Uh, here's a low end Crosby rookie. You can p- look at this a PSA ten power play Crosby rookie. You can own this for about a hundred dollars. That's unbelievable, right there. And this, the other reason I love this is because it's out of 750. You know, it's less than mm-hmm. trilogy. It's it's less than SP authentic. It's uh, I think it's such a great, and I love the I, I do love the design, even though they have they are starting to make it a little stale. Um, Andrew, I don't know what this comment is about. Would you consider upgrading from a seven to a nine for 50? Don't know what that's about, but I'm sure it's interesting. Laura, what's going on, Laura? Good to see you as always. My basic oh, Andrew says my basic young gun McKinnon is still alive. Congratulations. Good to hear. 86 says, I think the PSA 7 might have scared people away on that Artifacts Crosby. It's still a numbered rookie that looks awesome. I'm with you, 86. I'm with you. And Brett says, when Upper Deck try to come up with new ideas, they end up making chemical composition. Well, they're not proud of that one, Brett. We know that. But I think they do a pretty good job overall, personally, when they come up with new designs. Except for chemical composition, Brett. You're definitely right about that one. Oh, I got outbid. I got outbid. Ah, okay. Uh, Cros- sorry, uh, Crosby's Young Gun PSA 10, beautiful card, P- uh, 2,500. We got the Gretzky sign of the times here and the Ovechkin. We talked about those. There's the, there's the Tavares. It's up to 310, which I think is well-deserving. We got this guy here, the Crosby buyback. What a nice card that is. And the, the McKinnon, another McKinnon. P- the PSA 10 is at 550, while the BGS 95 is at 330. You know, decide, decide for yourselves which card is better. But a lot of people just want the PSA. So that's just the way, that's just the way she goes. We got the dry sidle, young gun, BGS 95. I got to put in one more bid here. I think, sorry guys. I just got to, I just got to put in one more bid and that's going to be my last bid. Let's see if I get it in on time. Even I got 20 seconds. That's my last bid on that card. If someone outbids me, they can have it. Okay, and then we got the exquisite Connor McDavid rookie auto. The auto is a nine. The card is a nine. 
It's from it's from Exquisite, and uh, it's a great card. It's an autograph McDavid rookie out of 149, sitting at 1725. Let's uh, spin the clock right now, and let's see what happens here. How does this say? Oh, no, I am the highest bidder. Let's see if they outbid me. Okay, lots of cards sold now, guys. Uh, this was this card here. You can ask Josh. I was I mm-hmm. love this card here, and it sold for 3120. Probably one of my favorite McDavid rookie cards. 2015 Fleer Showcase Violet Medallion. Uh, congrats to the winner. It's a card that I wish that I would have bought, but that money will go towards something different tonight for me, potentially, unless I get outbid again. Which you I want to know something crazy? Cool. Yeah. About that card? The yeah. last base Young Guns PSA 10 pop 80 billion sold for more than that. See, that makes no sense to me. This is such a bargain. This card for for thirty one hundred dollars is probably the buy of the, it's that might be the buy of the century right there. You know, what a what a card, what a great card. Yeah, out of okay. twenty five. Oh, Josh, you're out. You're out of Survivor. Wow. Sorry, yeah, buddy. Shock. Shocking. I yeah. suck at this game. <laughs> I suck. Dude, it's random. There's no way we can really know what's going to happen, right? Um, let's do this, guy. Oh, the the Quinn Hughes RPA. Has sold BC Neal. You are out of Survivor as we sit right now. The Macar Young Guns all sold, all for within a few bucks of each other. I've been outbid on that card. I don't think I can bid. I don't think I can bid again. No, I can't do it. Just, oh, God. Just can't do it. Can't do it. Oh, Gretzky, the show is still in. Okay, so let's go to the top here, guys. We're going to click refresh. And we're going to push all the sold cards down to the bottom. And uh, let's see, let's see what's sold. So, oh, still quite a few alive. So before we just do the solds, let's also go through what's alive because we don't want to ignore those. The Gordy Howe, PSA mm-hmm. 4, 53 Parkers is at 340. The, the PSA 2.5 Bobby Hall is at 1,025. And the Vezina, all-time great, is at $34. 17 and a quarter for the Phil Esposito, PSA 8. The bossy PSA 9 OPG rookies at 17, or sorry, 11.75. The Gretzky, we're at two grand now. So gorgeous. We love this card in this on this show. Oh, look at the bossy. There's the bossy. We love the Gretzky. The PSA 8 is at 10,500. 10,500. Wow. The SGC 8 is at 6,500. That makes sense to me. The BGS 9.5 Lemieux is at 4,000. The PSA 9 is at 1,750. That's quite the quite the difference there and that makes mm-hmm. sense to me 2100 on the Gretzky sign of the times gold 2500 on the Crosby young gun 550 on this nice sign of the times Gretzky auto uh, Ovechkin PMG reds at seven and a quarter and the Tavares is at 350 guys that's such a such a good card in my in my opinion 500 bucks here on this Crosby buyback 800 on the rookie threads Ovechkin buyback this is a tw- this is a card that was produced in 2005. It was repacked out in 2015. This is not a 2015 card, guys. This is a, le- a legit rookie year Ovechkin card. So don't let the title fool you into thinking it's not a rookie year card. It is a rookie year card. But is it, a, signing, is it a rookie auto? No, the auto was signed later. Auto was signed later. Yep. Yeah. Good, and that's a good distinction to make, Josh. Thanks for pointing that out. But the card itself was produced in 2005 and packed out. And it's a three-color jersey piece too, which I think has to be somewhat rare. I haven't seen them all, but that would mm-hmm. be my guess. The uh, Parker's Priority Signing Exclusives Gretzky comes in at uh, number two of three at 850. Pop one with one graded higher. It's 975 for a McDavid Young Guns BGS 95. That seems low to me, but you know I don't really track the, the, B, the BGS 95 McDavid's. Couple more Gretzky autos, 850 on the 2017 Ultimate and the 2017 uh, Opichi Platinum Rainbow repacked out in 2019 is sitting at six and a quarter. BGS, uh, sorry, PSA 10 on the card and 10 on the auto. Pretty cool right there. That's a nice looking card, actually. I like that one. Mm-hmm. The Macar employee PMG is at 450 and the Jack Hughes is at 145. But the Macar is a nine and the Hughes is an eight. And these cards are numbered out of 250. So they're quite plentiful as far as employee PMGs go. And then this Gretzky, what is this? This is a 2015 UD Portraits. 
this card, the issue I have with this card, Josh, is that the autograph, while very nice and silver, is a different color than the serial number. That is a yeah. mismatch to me. No, just, you know, how about you? Do you do you see that as a mismatch? I don't like that. Uh, number one, there's a lot of Gretzky autos in the auction tonight, if you've noticed. And I have a hard time wrapping my head around like I don't have like a really good Gretzky auto card and there's so many options. So sometimes I wonder if there's too many options. Like I literally mm -hmm. don't know where to start even. Um, and, and that's just a question I've been thinking about a lot is like, are there too many Gretzky autos? Is that such a thing? Is that sacrilegious well, to say? I, I do know that upper deck is they're very cognizant of, you know, of finding a balance between providing enough so that their products will sell, you know, mm -hmm. to the uh, based on Gretzky because people love it, um, and and you know providing too many, so you know they have to put some in. He's a spokesman; mm -hmm. they have the deal. His autograph is probably the most expensive of all the autographs that they have for them for them to get. Uh, so it's a balance, right? They need to keep on producing them, but they have to make sure that they don't do too many of them each year and um i don't know how many they do every year but I'm sure we could figure it out somehow or at least get close so tough to say josh tough to say I, I for my money too i think the i understand they're out of 250 but the foiling on the purple pmgs i i, I always think looks amazing like they're really nice looking cards in my opinion yeah yeah i i hear you on that they are very very nice uh okay guys let's keep on let's uh see what else is going on here we've got uh we're back we're down oh the the look at this the gretzky show card is still going that's pretty awesome so what has sold in the last little bit the caprizov the quinn hughes the jack hughes canvas the jack hughes employee pmg the young gun mcdavid went for 1170 right there this ovechkin did 960 i think that's an absolute steal 1020 mm -hmm. on the on the gretzky buyback there out of three the Ovechkin, so the Ovechkin PMG Red does 870, and the rookie car, the rookie year Jersey Auto does 960. PMGs get a lot of love still, even though this to me is a way kind of uh, just, it's just, I do love the PMG, but this is just, it's a rookie year card autographed by, by Ovechkin. The Crosby Young Gun PSA 10 did $3,000. The BGS 95 Lemieux does 4,800. And that who's that take out Warrior Kid? That takes Warrior Kid out of the where did I put you, Warrior? There you are. Takes you out of the survivor. Sorry to see you go. 2100 now on the Gretzky B, BVG 6.5. Bossy is still alive for Gary. The Gordy House 63 53 Parker sold for 408. And the PSA 2.5 Bobby Hall has sold for $1,230. We're gonna do a quick refresh here. I want to go to some comments, Josh. Let's just mm -hmm. let the clock tick. We'll sit here. We need some. We need these reds to turn green, guys, for these cards to go into the next window. Uh, so let's see what. The, oh, Chris Perkins says he stole the Ted Lindsay. Congratulations, Chris Perkins. We talked about that one at length. Larry says you talked me into the seventy-two Hall goes with the ninety-one Ultimate Bobby Hall Auto. Larry, congratulations on the. 72 hall would you pay for that it couldn't have been much right that's not a very expensive card i want to see what you paid for it 55 bucks congratulations there to you nice definitely brett says the gretzky all-star buybacks is tempting mm -hmm. jake doll likes the 60 1960 vezina don't blame you jake don't blame you on that the warrior had high hopes of being able to get that ov but sadly it's far out of my range sorry to hear that warrior sorry to hear that the professor picked up the michael jordan skybox e oh wow very cool, Professor. And thank you for using the SEL affiliate link. Greatly appreciate that. Dave Marone says, why do people pay so much for young guns? Yeah, I mean, good question, right? Um, I, I, I certainly don't, but people love them. That's all, I, that's all I can say. 86 says, Josh, start with the one that hits your feels the most. For me, it's a 1992 buyback auto. Talking about the good Gretzky. Advice. Joe Perot, vintage is king. Yes, I hear you on that. And Brett S says, modern PMG prices make no sense. Take my car. I just bought the fluorescence green PSA eight out of 15 for 130 bucks. Yet the PMG to 250 is 500. You pay for the PMG name. Yes, you do. And I think there's value in those fluorescence cards, Brett. Smart. I think that's a very astute play by you. Congratulations 
on that. And 86 says, I think I'm out of Survivor 2, but my streak of beating Josh <laughs> continues. That's not Very... something to be proud of. Believe me, it's, I'm terrible at this game. And I did not win that card that I wanted tonight, but oh well. Okay. Um, let's now go back to the top. We're going to click refresh. We've had more cards sell. Let's push them down to the bottom. Bezna is still going at 38 bucks. Phil Esposito, 1775. Bossy, Gary is still in it at 1250. The BVG 6.5 Gretzky is still in it. Who picked that? I thought someone picked that. No, I'm not seeing anybody pick that one. The PSA 8 Opichi is still going. And uh, wow. Wow is all I need to say on that one. The the PSA 9 Lemieux is at 1800 Those three cards, everything else here is still going. Here's what is sold now. The Ted Lindsay PSA 2 went to the viewer. Congratulations. I can't remember everyone, all the comments. I apologize, but I know you I know you won it. Here we go. The the Tim Horton sold for $13.50. I can't help but wonder what comps are on that card. Josh, would you mind checking that out? Do you mind the 1953 yeah. Parker's Tim Horton? Just to see what some of these have sold for in the past. Bobby Hall did $12.30 for the PSA 2.5. The Makita second year, 720. What a great looking card right there. The Jackman PSA 7, 492. Just jump in when you have it, Josh. Cheever, yeah, that was a PSA 8, right? Uh, yes, it's a PSA 8, Tim Horton. Yeah. Yep. Last sale was 2010. Before that was 1560, 1530, 1261. All time high, 7,800 from my. October of 2016. I don't, I don't know if the pop count was much lower than maybe. Yeah, that could have all sometimes could that have been a PSA 8.5? I've noticed some glitches there uh when I've looked up uh some pricing before. So just to just to wonder because that's a huge number for oh for no, point. that was a it was a 52. Sorry. 52. Okay. Okay. That yeah, it was in the uh, mislabeled or in okay. the uh software. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so the last one you said sold for about two thousand. This one does thirteen fifty. So is that because of the color, the 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 poor coloration on this could be, could definitely be. Where are we at on the clock here, guys? Two and a half minutes left. We still have a few level, two more levels of five minutes left after this. But just scrolling through what sold, if anything catches your eye, Josh. Well, here's the two Gordy Howes here that the professor was asking about. And so look, I mean, this is very interesting. They're both PSA eights. The base card. Is a in I believe is in better shape than the sub this 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 uh, commemorative card commemorating the 600 goals. Uh, yet this sold for double what this one did. That doesn't make any sense to me. Just doesn't make sense. I can't explain why that mm -hmm. happened. But you know the because we we saw someone shared with us the population earlier and they were basically the same. Like one was 62, one was 68, or something like that. So that's pretty interesting how that how that went down there. The three and a half Gretzky rookie sold for 900 while the authentic does 588. I think that's a fair price. The SGC eight does 8,100. Um, yeah, a bit more than I think I would have wanted to pay for it if I was in the market for it. The BGS nine Lemieux does 1290 while the nine five does 4,800. Okay, not, don't really have much to say about that. The, oh, look at this, Josh. The, the sign of the times gold does 2520. Wow, wow right? Big so number. I, I, sorry, I have an interesting update on the BVG Gretzky 6.5. Mm -hmm. So the copy in tonight's auction is the exact copy that, so, that set the all-time high for this grade, BVG 6.5, in the PWCC Weekly in May of 2022 when it sold with Buyer's Premium for 4200 Wow. So this exact card sold for 4200. It's at 23 right now, which is about 2720, I think. Uh 20, no, 2760. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, I mean this is a great card. It's a great card. But meanwhile, this is up to 115 now. And um congrats to whoever's going to own that. Uh I think it's a bit. I think it's a bit high for me, but but this one, I just I just love this card again, as as yep. we know. I think a lot of us do. Well, here we go. Ten seconds. Let's hover here, guys, 
and see if any of these, if either of these Gretzky's get a bid in the next four seconds, someone could be coming in right now with a bid. We're about to find out. Let's see what happens here. Are they sold? And the, the 6.5 does sell for 2760. Great buy right there. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. this card is now up to twelve thousand dollars plus, which is fourteen four out the door. And um, yeah, I'd rather have this card. I'd rather have this card for and save myself ten thousand U.S. dollars or so. <laughs> uh, no, or more, more than ten thousand. Yeah, more. yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, that's just the way. That's just the way the hobby is. It's it's all. It's it's about the. It's so much more about the plastic that the card is in and the little label. Uh, than the card than the cards themselves in many cases but also people want to you know that that eight is is bigger than 6.5 and that's what you know that's what a lot of people like so um and i i like it somewhat myself but only if i agree only if i agree and, and in this case um again i i much prefer the 6.5 to the i don't say much prefer but but i do prefer it enough that i would definitely take this card over that card uh, even if they were raw as mentioned earlier the Tavares one of one prism is up to 410 right now, which is right around $500 with buyer's premium. Chuck Clement picked up the Jack Hughes PMG. Congratulations, nice. Chuck. Very nice. Looks like uh, Louie was after it too, but Chuck got it. Mm -hmm. Adam Holgate got the 63 Parkhurst Howe and the Michael J. Fox autograph Funko Pop. Congratulations, Adam Holgate. Very, very good. And yes, Warrior, crazy the price difference between those two Gretzkys. For sure. So who is still in the Survivor, Josh? Let's see what's going on here. Bossy has sold. So Gary is out. Brett S. is in with the Tavares. Luigi is in with the PSA 8. Gretzky. Gretzky, the show card, right over here, is still going. Todd McDonald is still in with that one. The Young Gun Crosby. Did that one sell, Josh? I don't. Oh, you know what? Here we got to we got to refresh again. We've had oh, yes, the bossy I crossed out. We're gonna refresh mm -hmm. again. Let's see how many cards are left now. We're probably down to the oh, the show is still going. So so Todd is good. Crosby Young Gun looks like the Crosby Young Guns has been sold. So that takes eighty six out. But at least he played the Crosby horizontal buyback. Crosby horizontal, but still in. Craig's cards wow. is still in. And Mike Kemmel took the McDavid Exquisite, which I think is done. Is the McDavid Ex yes, the McDavid Exquisite is done. Sold for 2070. So Mike Kemmel is out. So as far as Survivor goes, guys, we're down to Brett S with his Tavares Prism 101, Luigi with the PSA 8, Gretzky, Todd McDonald with the Gretzky the show out of the cup. And Craig's cards with the with the Crosby horizontal buyback, which is a gorgeous card, which is just, we're going to come to it right away. Right over here, this one right here, are the ones that are still, and it looks like he's going to the next level. Tavares might not make it. The show is going to go to the next level. And what about the Gretzky? The Gretzky is could be over here in a minute and a half right there we will see the professor says i was watching the 1968 mickey mantle tonight psa 8 sold for 1560 and a psa 9 is did 10250 yeah crazy differences in uh from a psa 8 to a psa 9 professor good observation there josh anything on your mind at this moment yeah actually i was just thinking about the crosby buybacks and then the gretzky the show autos and how they're still live and it to me it speaks to the power of eye appeal because it, especially like the Gretzky of the show that's again we talked about all the Gretzky options and at what 1300 minus buyers premium it, it's not even a numbered card and so you you have to uh, you know think boy how is this bid so much it's just a great looking card and I think that that's probably what's attracting bidders to it and I wonder if you were to look on the official checklist, I wonder if you would see like, is this, does it have the tougher pack odds than the other show cards do? Is it a, it, it you know? does. So it's a group a, which is in one in 171 packs, which remember the cup is a one pack box. So one in 171 boxes, then group B is one in 85 group C is one in 61 and group D is one in 35. I was looking, I 
thought the same thing and looked it up. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, good to know. Good to know that it is tougher. Uh, here we go. The Tavares might be done. That might take Brett S out of Survivor. Let's give it a moment because I don't think that did get a bit. I think the clock just needs to reset here because, yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. So that's it. So the, the Tavares is out. So, Brett S, you are voted off the island. The Gret What happened with the Gretzky? The Gretzky has been sold. Luigi, you have been voted off the island. We are now down to the Crosby buyback. That is that is Craig's cards. And we are down to Todd McDonald on the show. It's down to Todd and Craig, guys. Good luck to each of you to win Auction Survivor tonight. And your prize for winning Auction Survivor is a humongous congratulations from <laughs> me and Josh. Right, Josh? That's what we got right now. Maybe we'll go. do something in the future with that. We'll have to see. But that's what we got going on right now. Let's hit refresh and see what's going on. 14-4 is what that PSA 8 Gretzky ends up selling for. We are down to six cards left in the auction that we are watching of the 68 that we are watching tonight. The Vezina. 1960 tops is at 42 bucks. The Cro the Gretzky sign of the times is at 800. The Crosby beautiful buyback is at 650. This Gretzky buyback is at 875. This one's a 14 and a quarter, and the show is at 1400. Gets a bid. Both cards in Survivor get bids. Only two, they're the two only the only two of the six remaining that have bids so far. Professor says, where did you? Go, Josh, to look up the pack odds of A, B, etc. cetera. A Beckett checklist. Beckett checklist, Professor. Beckett checklist. You can also go to, uh, what's that? What's the site? Is it Sports Collectors Daily, is it? Hold on. I have a, a link right here. Sportscollectorsdaily.com, I think, mm. is, a, is another one that you can get checklists from, Professor, I believe. With some of those, with some of those stats, so we are now in the last five-minute window of the auction extended bidding window, and in two and a half minutes, we will go down to the one-minute windows, and we will have well at least three cards or oh, four cards. We just got bids on this Gretzky buyback auto here and this Gretzky sign of the time. So the Gretzky autos, look at this, Josh. Of the five, of the six cards remaining, four of them are Gretzky autos. One is a Crosby auto, and one is a George Vezina. All-time great from 1960 tops. Does any of this surprise you? It doesn't well, surprise who, me, but if I say the, that, I should have picked one of these. The Vesna, they're bidding in nickels because that card has gone up like $6 since we started. The <laughs> Very true. And if I just want to say hello. we got about 25 people watching us on X right now, formerly Twitter. So welcome to everybody there. Welcome to the people on Facebook and uh, and those that have been jumping in and out on on instagram as well thank you all for joining the show tonight we're down to just under two minutes on this let's go back down here and see what's going on with some of these sales 348 on the 1960 parkhurst jacques plant 62 bucks on the ted Lindsay second year 660 wow. on the psa6 jeffrey on uh penguins chronicle says i sent you a dm with a close-up of what you're referring to let me rookie Okay, I'm going to take a look at that right now, Josh, just to see if I can make out what uh, Penguins is saying to me. On There it is. I have your message now, and I'm going to look. And okay, yes, yes, I can see the little bit of the dots coming into the beak and the gloves. Yes, I definitely, uh, obviously I can see it. I will say, though, to penguins on the pictures that he just sent me of the BGS nine, five and the nine. Um, I think that the, the registration is equally off on those two. It's just a different plate, right? On the one on the card that is the BGS nine, five, we're seeing the magenta plate placed a little bit high. And the one that's the, the PSA nine, we're seeing the yellow plate placed a bit low. So I don't know that either is worse. What do you think of that? What do you think about that penguins chronicles? Um, and then the BGS nine has both off a little bit. I don't, I'm not that offended by any of them, but I don't think they're that, I don't, I don't think they're, uh, they're that different, 
But again, just my preliminary thoughts. Where are we at here? 10 seconds, guys. 10 seconds. We're about to lose Vezina. And this Gretzky buyback, let's see what happens here. 1425. Will it get a bid in the final, final moments? Did Vezina, Vezina doesn't seem to have gotten a bid. Neither did the Gretzky. They're going to update right away. And those two are now gone. And we are down to four cards, including a battle. A battle right now between Todd and Craig. <laughs> Professor just put in another nickel in the Vezina. Hilarious. Bedard who? Yeah, no Bedards here. Seven levels. Thank you for joining the show. Appreciate the, the comment says that we're having a fun show. Really appreciate that. And Penguins Chronicles, I want to thank you for taking the time to send me those close-ups. And I want to talk about that more. I want to talk about that more with you. Uh, Louie <laughs> gets a good laugh from the professor. The professor is also a part-time comedian, everybody. So, Jeremy, the uh, the buyback, Gretzky Auto the, from Platinum, the rainbow there out of 10. Th that card has sold four times. And last day was $422 in October. And it sold Ooh. for $660 before that, $504 and $643. So, by far, this will be a record sale on that card. Wow. That's that's really yeah, all those were raw though, and so this is the first PSA 10, so it kind of makes sense in that, that regard. Works. But it's a 10 10 even, it's got the 10 yeah. 10, which which uh, I think people just really really like the 10 10. There, people will pay a lot of money for auto 10 on a, on, a, on a label, but it's also uh, a population thing, right? It's a newer, it's a newer mm -hmm. addition to the to PSA's arsenal of of, of grading, you know, specialties and uh. And people are are buying buying those low pop uh, those low pop grades. Warrior Kid says whoever gets the McKinnon is getting a steal. Not well. The, we don't have any McKinnons that we're watching anymore. Here we're getting bids on this. Fifteen seconds left. They're all going to the next window, guys. Fifteen hundred on the show. We'll have another minute window coming at us here right away. And look at everything's going to make it. All four cards that remain are going to make it into the next window. We'll let that update. Warrior says it's very subtle, but it makes the overall image blurry. You notice it on the nine. It's more vibrant because it had the best registration. I look at the penguin first, then you go to the Cooper logo. Awesome. Awesome, penguins. Again, I'm going to DM you more. Professor says my nickel bid got jammed up on the bezin. I lost, but I saved nickels for another day. Professor, you you're putting together quite the uh, eclectic collection. I think uh, I'm now going to start referring to you as the comedian, the sports card comedian seven. I'm just kidding, professor. You'll always be the professor to me. All right, and look at this. Already getting bids in this next window. Two of the four. The show needs a bid in the next 20 seconds or so to go to the next window, guys. We're in the one minute. This is where it's fast and furious, Josh. There's been one sale on the show, Auto, and I think it's sold for like 1600 total. So we're okay. just ahead of that. Yeah, we're at 1800 now on this one. There's the bid. Now we're at 1830. 1830 on the show as we sit right now. But let's see. Here we go. Everything's going. We're going to update. And we're gonna, now we're back to red, everybody. We're back to the reds. Let's see how long it takes for these to go green. And the Penguins Chronicle says, on, oh, then I go to the Cooper logo. So he ends up this comment. I go to the Cooper logo on Lemieux's helmet. They typically go hand in hand, like on Gretzky's oil drop. And then, the, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure that's how it works. And um, no, I appreciate it. We're going to, we're going to, Add this to the arsenal, and, and Penguins Chronicles gets credit for bringing us up to speed on that. The show gets a bid now, 1550. The Sign of the Times Gretzky from 06 gets a bid. We need bids on these two cards now in order for them to get to the next window. And as we are sitting, Craig's cards, he was sweating. He's no longer sweating because his card just got a bid, and they're all going for another minute. We have bidding wars on our hands here, people. We have bidding wars on our hands baseball card curmudgeon enters the chat everybody please say hello to the baseball card curmudgeon we are now three minutes in to this level and we are all going in again let's see when these greens when these all get bids and we go back to green there we go the platinum gets up to 1250 now josh we was at a thousand last time we were parked on it wasn't it now it's at 1250 mm -hmm. Do you, do you worry about an auto on that surface over time? I don't know. Not, not, okay. not I only would if it was like going to be rubbed up against it or sitting in the light. If it sits in the light, I worry about, I worry about all autos, but no, I don't think I, I don't think that I, uh, I worry about it. Mm -hmm. Do you? I just don't know enough. It's just a question. 
I would have about that card. I typically don't like OPG Platinum cards autoed, but this we one is a, very, very nice. We have a problem here. Craig's cards uh, and oh, Todd gets a bid. Todd gets a bid just in time. Wow. But Craig's cards doesn't. Todd McDonald is the winner of auction survivor tonight. Todd McDonald, congratulations. The winning card, Gretzky the show narrowly beats out the Crosby buyback for Craig's cards. Craig's cards comes in second. Todd McDonald with a big win tonight. The big win. And here it comes, Todd. Congratulations. I felt like, uh, I felt a little bit like, hello, without congratulations. Awesome. All awesome Gretzky autos stuff. left. Brett S. says, Todd with a TKO win in the 12th round. No doubt. Congrats to Todd. Fun night for sure. Crosby autos do very well. Yes, they do, Andrew. 86 says, Jeremy's Gretzky's rookie knowledge versus Penguin's Lemieux rookie knowledge, a great main event. Well, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, you know, soak in Penguin's Lemieux knowledge, and I'm going to start to practice that with 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 Penguin's blessing, Penguin Chronicles blessing. I'm going to ask him for it, and um, I think I have a way. I think I have a plan. I think I have a strategy to get Penguin's Chronicles on board with letting me run with the knowledge that he has imparted upon me, which I am grateful for. Look at this. All three cards have bids here. All three remaining cards. All three Gretzky autos have bids. Pretty cool too. Rangers jersey on this card. All-star jersey here. Oilers jersey here. I wonder if the same person is going to take home a few of these Gretzky autos. We'll 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 stick around here for another three levels, Josh, until about 10 after mm -hmm. the hour to see what happens with these. Then we might cut short and end the show. But this has been fun. I just want to thank everybody, you know, who's joined. We're Running strong, over 50 people on YouTube throughout here. We've had over 20 people on, on X slash Twitter throughout the show as well. And probably about 150 to 200 people have dropped in on Instagram. All I can see are the, I can't really see. Well, we got, we got a couple right now. My Filthy Habit, Grimbo, if you guys are still watching. Thanks for jumping in quickly here on, on Instagram. Adam, the Real 27 guy, jumped in. Yeah. I should count this before I kill the before I kill that window because once I kill it, I can't get those analytics back. Look at that, fourteen hundred now, fourteen hundred on this card, Josh. Like okay, I got a question for you. They're yeah. all close to the same price. Of the three Gretzky autos left, which is your favorite? The show. I love that card, and I am not a fan of the show cards. I haven't been before, but I'm a fan of that of that Gretzky. I think this is so clean. Let's open it up, guys. Look how clean this is. Oh, mm -hmm. the shadow, the nice, simple background, the big, bold, blue auto, the full body stick shot home. That used to be the, the Oilers home jersey. I, I love the looks of that card, man. That is a stunning card. What about you? Which one do you prefer, Josh? And and to the let's ask the chat too, guys. Which of these three Gretzky autos do you guys like the most? But you're, you're first, Josh. Uh, it's tough for me to pass up a hand numbered card because I, I do love that, but I got to agree with you. The show is just a beautifully designed card, perfectly balanced and uh, just amazing. Yeah. Well, it's going to the next level. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. with you, Josh. And you know, it, it, I, I like, I do like the looks of this card, but this, you know, we're talking like pop versus OPG platinum. I love OPG platinum, but it's, it's, you know, Cup versus Opeachy Platinum. The, well, the the what the Platinum has going for it is, in my mind, is Gretzky in the old All Star jersey. I love that too. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they all go? They all. I think they all got to the next level. It looks like. I don't think we're going to see any of them update there. So we're going for another minute here on these ones. The professor is leaning towards the show as well. Brett S says horizontal versus vertical. Okay, Brett. Mm -hmm fair but what about it you like do you prefer the vertical i like brett i think what brett is saying i often prefer vertical cards to horizontal cards but sometimes horizontals are just beautiful and i will collect horizontal cards like there's no tomorrow um if i love the look of the card what are your brett if you could yeah brett's saying all-star i think you're saying it because mm -hmm. i and to, for i think brett is saying 
He likes the car, but he also prefers horizontals, which I completely respect. Have no issue with that, but I do definitely love some uh, some some horizontals as well. Andrew says only downside is Gretzky has a few of the show cards. Fair enough. I just you know looking at this one in isolation, I think it's just absolutely stunning. Warrior Kid says, "Why don't you like him with the eighty Oilers?" Oh, he's asking eighty six. That yeah. says, "I'm not an Oilers Gretzky guy, but I love that show card." I think I know. I think I think eighty six told me that. I love his reason for it. I hope you explain it eighty six because if you're the same guy who, if it's the same explanation I'm thinking of, I love the reason that you're about to give for that. I think it makes so much sense to me. No, that was a that was actually someone else. That was Stephen Ho who gave a reason. I'll tell what it was after. Um. Andrew says both are great. Laura says the show card as it shows him in action and a clear auto as well. Yeah, the auto is unencumbered for sure. 86 says because I'm 40. Because I'm 40. So I think what he's saying is that when because you saw him play, it was with the Rangers probably. Right. And, because, and Kings. Kings. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm a few years older than 86. I'm about as many years older to know that, you know, I started collecting uh, that many years ahead. And um, and he was with the Oilers for, the, for those years. So and the auction is over for us guys with the show leading the way at twenty two twenty, followed by the sign of the times at eighteen hundred and the All Star card at seventeen hundred and forty. Yeah, exactly. Eighty six says I never saw him play as an Oiler. That was the that was what I was thinking was the reason, and that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, Brett says a lot of nostalgia for me with Campbell versus Wales. Me too, Brett. Me too with those old conferences. Uh, yeah, well, you wish they'd bring him back. Oh, this whole Eastern yeah, Conference, Western Conference is hooey. I don't like it. I'm with you. I think they I think the NHL did that to keep up with the other sport, like with basketball and that, and you know, football, NFC, AFC kind of thing, just to take away boo. name. Yeah, boo. I'm with you on that as well. 86 grew up watching him as the king and the Rangers growing up in the States. Yes. Andrew says nice Sunday auction. Yeah, I'm with you. Let's do this now. Let's just resort this guys by highest price. We'll take a look at you know the top uh, few of them, see what they sold for. Then we'll wrap it up. Warrior Kid, before we do, says, never saw him play for the Oilers, but I'm a sports guy, and I appreciate him and what he did. That's why I only collect his Edmonton 80s cards. Nothing wrong with that. Whatever works for you guys. All right, guys, let's do the top 10 or so cards. The Gretzky PSA 8 does 14.4. The Gretzky SGC 8 does 81. And the Lemieux BGS 9.5 does 4,800. Those are the top three spots. The Ovechkin PSA 10 Young Gun does 3480. And meanwhile, the McDavid Flare Showcase, Flare Showcase, Violet Medallion out of 25 does 3120. Feel of a deal. Boy, whoever bought that has hobby savvy. And the Ovet, the, the Crosby Young Gun PSA Can 10. Can we does stick there for a minute? Like, if 10 years from now you saw that card, this card sells for 25 grand, would you be surprised? No. No, I mean, if McDavid, you know, McDavid, like I've said, he needs to win a cup, at least one cup. I also think I'd also like to see him lead Canada to gold in the 2026 Olympics. I think will be very difficult because I think the I think the Americans are a absolute powerhouse and my money would be on the Americans to win that tournament. But I think if McDavid can somehow power Canada to gold and win a cup, then this car, then, 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 I mean, he's officially entered, you know, GOAT status, G O T E, uh, greatest of their era status. And, uh, and yeah, but until does then, he play, does he play goalie? Does he play goalie? If you want him he to lead Team Canada to the gold, they need mm -hmm. goalies. They need goalies for sure. Uh, the, here we go. The, the BVG 6.5, Gretzky Steel. comes in with that seventh place. Yeah, it comes in seventh place at 2760. The gold sign of the times, 2520, and the McDavid, uh, Young Gun PSA 10 does 2340, about 600 bucks less, 700 less than this card here. And uh, and this is a way better card. Oh my gosh. Oh, Jack Hughes exclusives 2310, the show 2220, and the PSA 9 Lemieux does 2190, which um, a bit of a fall from grace on this card. These were doing, you know, yeah. seven, eight grand not too long ago. All right. 86 says, I definitely appreciate and love it, but the collector in me wants his King's uniform. Stick with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Stick with it. Andrew says, so amazing is worth double what he paid today. Sorry, I forget. Oh, I think you must be talking about this one right here. And if you are, um, I agree. This card is mm -hmm. worth way more than 3120 I should have bought it. Especially since I missed out on the other card that I was after. Okay. 
Well, that's good. Uh, oh, Mikey Singer joins us in uh, on Instagram. Dr. Card Shop does. Uh, very nice to to see you, Dylan. So Pittsburgh chasing cardboard guys that have joined us on Instagram. Thank you very much, everybody who's joined us on Twitter. We're about thirty people on Twitter right now, and still over fifty on on YouTube. Well, thank everybody for joining, Josh. Um, any sort of final comments? Congratulations again to Todd McDonald for winning Auction Survivor tonight with the Gretzky, the show card. Great pick. I almost picked it myself, Todd. Really great pick. Josh, what do you what do you want to leave everybody with tonight? What I appreciate about tonight is I think we had an exciting end of the auction. The last few weeks have had good cards, but sort of petered out at the end. And I like to, it felt like there's a little suspense. Tons of Gretzky autos, so it's it good to see that. And I feel like a broken record. I say this all the time, but there's so much variety in the weekly that it's it's like a different auction every week. It's, it's almost like there are themes that, that we have. And uh, to me, the theme was uh, the Gretzky autos tonight. It was. You're right. Where we had we had Ovechkin's. We had Ovechkin's. Was it last month or the last couple of weeks ago? Yeah, we there are themes in the end. It's because well, we're gonna have a theme next week if if we do a show, which I think we are, but it's not 100. percent But uh, there is a big there's a set break going on of C55s and C56s, I believe. So there's some really cool, you know, vintage original the first hockey sets coming on 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 uh pwcc actually why don't we just do a quick look at next week right here and uh i'll go to all items and let's just so and let's go by um oldest first earliest year and you can you saw right away so look at this the yeah. CP, this is the first set of hockey cards ever you got the art ross rookie right there he actually has two rookie cards in the set these are all c56s here there's his other one so you got the art ross card number 12 here and card number eight there. They're both ones. Great cards. This is a C56 set. As you can see, there's the Frank Patrick. This is card number one, which is really considered the very first hockey card ever. You know, player, single player card anyway. You've got the Cyclone Taylor rookie right here, card number 15. This is a one, but what a beautiful copy. Oh, God, Josh, we just got to like look at the centering on this. The back must be just bungled it's got to how's that a one it's got to be the back it has to be just completely destroyed yeah tons of paper loss on the back guys tons of paper loss on the back look at it's missing the whole top like fifth of the card is basically missing so that's what kills it but guys and there seems to be maybe there's a crease coming through here even a bend you got a bend creasing coming all the way through here but when you look at it on the front I'm not seeing those creases at all. Uh, maybe seeing something through here. Mm -hmm. This is, this should, this better have an eye. Well, no eye appeal rating. Maybe they just can't do it because of the back of it. But what a beautiful one from the front. Um, this is going to come with my complete blessing. It's just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All these C56s, guys. What, oh, and... And here's the newsy in a one and a half. Let's look at this. Like these, these are the, you know, I'm kind of honing in on the key cards. Yeah, you can see a crease coming through here. But again, well centered for the for what it, it's got tilt, but whatever. It's a one. It's a one. Beautiful card. It's at a thousand bucks. I mean, that's an the newsy is an important card. Uh the, the important cards are the newsy Lalonde. Uh of course, the two Art Ross cards, the Frank Patrick, the Cyclone Taylor, very important card right here. I think the Newsy is card number 36. Isn't that the last card? Yeah, this is the last card in the set, the Newsy. And then the, we didn't really look at the two Art Rosses. I thought they were not great, but let's go back up and take a quick look at them. So here's one of them. We'll open the image in the other. And then here's the other. Yeah, this one's got a bend like right through the... Mm -hmm. right kind of through the middle of it so yeah this thing is this one i don't know i don't love all these spots on it, it looks like a pinhole right there maybe so this one's kind of messed up but despite that it's not that bad like the edges the corners the centering the the color is all good you just got all these little weird white things going on and then here's the card number eight got a pretty bad left edge there got a bend through it there big crease there like a well, a bendish crease corners are what they are 
big bend right there on the bottom right corner. You know, still what's that? Still which of the Art Ross is is considered the more desirable one or the tougher chase? I don't think I'm. I don't think either of them. To be honest, um, I, I've never. Uh, maybe someone could opine on that differently. I don't think either of them really are, Josh. Uh, they're card number eight and twelve from the same set. Maybe card number eight is more of the rookie because it's the earlier card in the set. But I mean, it's eight and 12. like there's no real difference there in my opinion, except eight and four, eight and twelve. But they're all. Do you know the why there's set. two? I don't know why there's two, but there's another player with two cards in the set. Uh, I always thought it was Russell, but um, it isn't. There's uh, is it Ernie Johnson that has two cards in the set? It might be Ernest Johnson. Okay. Uh, I'm sure someone could tell me if they. It's either Russell or Johnson. I think it's Johnson. Is that it there? McNamara. We got the Gull, the Clark, the Highland, or maybe it's Jack Marshall. It's Marshall mm -hmm. or Lester Patrick, Lalonde, Boff, Moran is a major one. Dunderdale is important. Jack Mar. Oh, is it Jack Marshall? I know I'm kind of. Anyway, it's one of it's. There's someone else, and they got the C55s here. Another like set break going on here. You got the Art Ross, the Art Ross, the second year Art Ross. I think is nicer than both of the the first the first mm -hmm. year Art Rosses, and of course the Vezina, did your Petrie, Ernest Russell, Ernie Johnson, Glass, Payan, Fred Lake, the George Vezina. This is a PSA four, very strong grade for the card. Let's see. Hold on, let's just close some of these up. Here's the Vezina, PSA four. Now we've got some some gloss loss on the top corner here, right there as well. Top left corner, uh, some staining. I don't know. I think this might be a bit overgraded, to be honest. I don't think mm -hmm. this is really worthy of a four by today's standards. That said, it doesn't matter. It's in the slab. That's what a lot of people care about, and um, and it'll it'll do just fine. Uh, color is pretty good. Image of him is good. You know, something going on in the on the hair right here. This line here shouldn't really be there the line over here as well but uh a, a great a really a great card overall so yeah but that's a bit of a preview for next week guys lots like look the full it seems like almost full set breaks so here's a c57 cyclone taylor psa6 this is a big card that's a very nice card you got a gordy howe we got psa1 this thing's this thing is a disaster though let's have a look at this <laughs> card this thing's an absolute disaster here let's close that we'll close that close that and that and that and we'll close that as well look at this disaster like it almost looks like one of those cards that are rounded supposed to be rounded on the corners mm -hmm. you know your big crease coming through here big crease down over here it seems like it's got some bends in it as well the edges are pretty pretty poor the corners are really rounded Look at the edge there. This corners, you know, these corners are like you can't even see the D in Detroit. Like, even I think the one, I, I really think the one is a generous grade on this card. It, it's missing so much of it. It could have been just graded authentic. I do want to see uh the back of it though, Josh. I think the one adds value. <laughs> yeah. So let's look at the back. You can sometimes see different different issues. There's that crease coming all the way down here. You've got some 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 action going on here. The back is just as bad. Like these corners are really thinned out too. You can see it's just like feathery almost on the corners. Yeah, that card's not all there. But this is a beautiful five. Whoa, this Bobby Hull is exceptional. From what I, I just want to make sure I believe that again, but. Look at how nice and bright the, the borders are here. The Hilt. centering is really good. It's obviously not perfect, but very good for the for the Bobby Hall rookie. Nice color. Yeah, this is a great copy. This is a is there really a tilt nice there? Vibe. Pardon? Is there a tilt there? There is a bit of tilt. I'm yeah, I'm noticing yeah. a bit of tilt. Yeah, yeah. I saw that, but I didn't even mention it because you know it's a five, right? The tilt we saw on the Gretzky was an eight. You know, I expect I will call out tilt. You know, next week I would call out the tilt on this, but right now, yeah, it's uh, there is some, but still a beautiful copy for a, for a five. Hey, look at that. we had the we had the uh, the Makita in this week's. We have the Bobby Hull in next week's. You know, it's not a second year, but it's not far off. Bunch of tall boys. 
Coca-Colas, and then some. So there we go. There we go. That's our little preview for next week, guys. Josh, uh, we're going to wrap up, guys. Warrior says, love the C-56s. NHL needs to release these old uniforms. They'd be perfect sweaters. Yes, they would be. Louie, deep thoughts with Josh Madigan. Laura says, for you mm-hmm. to preach. 86 said, I love, I collect on feels like a big baby. Nothing but love for, ah, hey, that's, that's exactly what everyone does. Yeah. Yeah, We, we can, we completely endorse that 86. What do these cards usually go for? You got to You got to just look that up. 86, uh, go try, check out either PWCC's, uh, you know, historical sales or check out card ladder as well. Thanks Todd. Appreciate that very much. So congratulations on your survivor win tonight. You can, you can wear that proud for sure uh, as we go forward here. Josh, let people know if there's anything they need to know about what's going on in the gong show. Is Troy back to his uh, usual seat now? He is. Yeah, it's uh, pretty hilarious. He had literally a 30-hour day because there's a six-hour time difference, and he was a total mess. He couldn't say any words. It was very funny. So, um, Or Troy, but he survived. Very good. Warrior Kid says another week, another great show. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Warrior Kid, for being here. Thank you, 86, as always. Guys, I want to just thank you all for joining. I appreciate those of you that did use the uh, the affiliate link to place your bids tonight. Thank you so very much for that. That really does go a long way. It's very important. Louis, good night to you. Thank you so much. Josh, the gong show is coming back. We'll be releasing Wednesday, early Wednesday morning. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow Tomorrow morning and and yeah. Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Yep. I'm Monday and track Thursday. Of All right, good stuff, guys. That's it. This was fun. Well, we we went later. I think we ended about a half hour earlier last week. But guys, thank you everybody for joining. We're gonna wrap this up. So it's Sunday night. Have a great week ahead. April is just around the corner. Tomorrow, don't get caught by any April Fool's jokes. Be on alert, you guys. And with that, this episode of the PWCC. Weekly hockey ending auction ending watch party is now over. Laura, thank you. Good night. And David Marone, thank you as well. Great show. I'm hooked. Love it, David. Thanks for being here, guys. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you all again.